everyone, Amanda here, thanks for joining me. Hope you're having a fantastic Saturday. It's very windy, wet and cold here in Yorkshire, so it's a perfect day for crafting. So I'm sat in my uh, craft room today making cards. And I came up with this one quite early this morning, shared it on my social media and a couple of people said, did I have a tutorial? So here we are, this is a diamond fold card. It's not difficult fold at all, um, and I just thought it, it um, showed off the papers and the stamps really beautifully. Okay, it's nice and dimensional and it does fold flat to go into the post. Now this ends up at 5x5 five five, so you'd either make yourself a small box or an envelope or on your envelope punch board or you know you can make envelopes uh, just by folding a piece of paper in half and the other way <laughs> it's really not difficult um, if you don't have one that's suitable so let's get cracking I'm going to show you not only how to make this one but I'm going to explain the theory behind the measurements so that you could make this any size you want all right so make sure you stay all the way through to get that information I'll also put the sizes um, on my blog. They may well not show on there till tomorrow. So let's get cracking. We're starting with an A4 sheet of cardstock. Can't remember the colour of this one. It's out of my old collection. I have a box full of leftover bits and bobs and uh, but I just thought that this was a lovely vibrant colour. So I'm going to cut it to 10 inches on the long side and is that cut? And then we're going to go to five inches. Okay. It's quite slim that way, is the card, but it's nice. But like I say, I'm going to explain the theory of the sizing to you. So if you decided you wanted it bigger, you'll be able to either make this go, go up in size or down in size. Okay, so make sure you stay all the way through. So then what you want to do is get your scoreboard out. <clears throat> And you want to score your cardstock in the first instance right down the middle at five inches. Okay, then on the panel which is the left here closest to the side there, you want to score at two and a half inches. That's it. <laughs> Just leave your score tool out because you're going to need it. Alright, so what you do now is grab yourself a pencil and a ruler. Okay, we're just going to measure here the two and a half inch mark, which is halfway. We could have just done it on the scoreboard, but um, I didn't want to leave an indent in the card. So two and a half is rough, is there. Okay, and then you get your scoring tool and your ruler, and you go from the edge of that two and a half inch score mark to the mark you've left there. And you can do it with your score tool, or you could do it with a pencil, whichever you find most convenient okay and the same here so you're going from the can you see you're going from the edge of that up to the mark you've made okay and you only do it on this side you don't need to do it on the other side as so I'm going to show you the quicker way of getting that point down here all right so then we're going to grab some scissors and we're going to cut along along the diagonal line there and cut those two triangles away. If you've got any pencil marks left over like I have, just gently rub them away with your rubber, not too hard, you don't want to ruin your card, but just gently, okay? So then what you want to do is fold these score lines, so that wants to fold in like so, and this one wants to fold in like so, alright? So then you close your card flat like that, and you're going to draw these two diagonal marks on here, so you're folding it fully in half, okay? And you just grab your pencil very lightly, not too hard, because you might want to rub some away if you don't cut it perfect and there and that leaves you a triangular marking for you to cut away so get off so we're going to cut that away you can do it on your trimmer if you like um i find it's as easy to just get a pair of scissors and cut along a, uh, you know your pencil line as it is to start trying to do it on your trimmer 
when it's at an angle. So that's your card base, okay, complete. All right, you always want to go, and um, whatever size you want your card is the size of the, the width. So if you want uh, your card to be like five by, end up five by five, you'll start with five by 10. If you wanted it to be six by six, you'd go six by 12. In okay, case so that's how you, you work it out for the, the size of it going that way when it's flat to go in an envelope, all right? So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our diamond bits here. So I've got the measurements and I've pre-cut mine. So first of all, you're gonna have one here, okay, facing upwards, and one here, okay? Um, so the way that you measure these is how you work it out so that it, it's fit for any purpose. Where's my ruler gone? <laughs> so measure the diagonal where, and whatever the diagonal measures, <clears throat> go down quarter of an inch. So my diagonal there is three and a half inches, can you see? Okay. So then that means that this piece of cardstock is three and a quarter by three and a quarter. So then whatever size card you decide to make, whether you do the five by five, six by six, four by four, you always know that if you measure that diagonal there, go down quarter of an inch and that is the size of square that you need to start off with. All right, so my got two squares, each one of these are three and a quarter by three and a quarter. So then if we go down quarter of an inch, we want our paper layer to go inside to be three by three. Okay, and the paper that I'm using is from the Textures Collection by Lou Collins. I'll leave the links in the description box below and it's from the Peacock Plume range. Beautiful, beautiful papers and this just takes one sheet of paper and you've still got a little bit left over if you cut it, um, you know, if you cut it right. And we're going to be using the sentiment stamps today. So we're going to be using this one here and this one here. Okay. So let's get busy building this card. I am using some PVA today. I'm being really good. Um, what I'm doing is I've got loads and loads of leftover half finished bottles of glue and I've told myself that I can't have any new glue until I've used them even if they're not my favourite glues because you end up where you've got you know and it's wasteful um, so I'm using up what I've got I've got a little shelf in front of me and that's where I store my glues and I've got to use what I have it's as simple as that <laughs> Okay. Uh, I, the thing with this paper is it doesn't, and, and obviously because it's a square, it doesn't matter which way around it you're sticking it on. You can always make that decision when you commit to sticking it to the actual card. All right. But these papers are background papers. They're non-dimensional. It's not like we've got a little girl's head here and a, and her legs are going to get cut off. Um, it's uh, non, you know, it's. Uh, beautiful flowing pattern so it doesn't matter so then what you want to do is we're going to put some glue on this one so we know that it's not going to be more than halfway okay so run your glue just just under halfway because it'll splurge out okay and there and there i'm a little heavy-handed with glue <laughs> And then what you want to do is if you just lay it all out flat like that and then add this piece on, okay? You need to make sure that where the two points here are, make sure they don't go over where the fold is, okay? So if it's going over, just move it down ever so slightly. Okay, you just want a little border there all the way around so you can see that lovely card underneath, but you don't want these points to protrude over the fold line. I else it won't fold nicely. Okay, so that's that bit done. All right, so let's speed ahead with the rest and then we can get some more cutting done. So plenty on. Plenty on because Amanda likes to smother things in glue. And then I'm gonna have it that way. That's nice. And again here, just give yourself a little increment. We've cut it so that you can have a border. Okay, so you want to uh, make sure you've got the same gap here 
as you've got here, roughly. I mean, it don't matter, you know, we're not getting plumb lines out. It's a card. Handmade cards are made with love, not with perfection. Don't ever forget that. I should have that written on the wall. Handmade things are made with love, not perfection. <laughs> right, so the centre part here, this is really easy to measure. So all you do, you measure the width. This is obviously two and a half because we've scored it at two and a half. And we know that our card is five inches um, you know, wide. So you'd again drop down a quarter of an inch. So your card stock is going to be... <coughs> Um, four and three quarters by two and a quarter and then the paper is quarter of an inch shorter again I lost my train of thought then quarter of an inch shorter again at four and a half by two okay it's really really easy once you just get into the habit of those measurements um, you'll find that it becomes second nature that's if you're new to card making if you're not new to card making You'll be able to do it with your eyes shut, so you've no excuses. <laughs> you just get used to it. I know when I first started doing card making, I really struggled. I couldn't even cut a, an A4 base. I was like, how does that even make two cards? Um, but with a little bit of practice and some help from friends and inspiration from others, you know, you get there, don't you? Um, so I'm just going to glue this one on. Okay. Now you could leave that uh, white part plain if you want to do your writing or add a sentiment. I'm going to have it so that the person can write on the back because I wanted to um, show off this pretty paper. So I'm covering mine with, with lovely paper. Alright. So they can write on the back there as well. It's not a problem. Alright. Plenty of, just right on the bottom. You don't have to write in there. I want to put pretty paper on it. So that is your basic design of your card. Okay. Um, so now we're going to do some stamping. And I'm going to show you how you make it stand up. And I've got another tip for that, which is really, really important. So I've got some card here for stamping. Now, um, you do in this little section in because when I watched my video back I realised that I'd missed out these two little parts here so I'm editing this little section in between the card and the stamping so what you need for the little triangles here again it's quite easy you measure that space and you go down quarter of an inch and cut a square don't think of it as a triangle cut a square so your square needs to be um, two and a quarter by two and a quarter all right so just cut one you only need one and then all you need to do is cut that one square in half and then your paper again think of it as a square not a triangle so this needs to be two by two so again cut that in half and layer them up and glue them on so in the next section I'm going to do the stamping these triangles will be missing because I did forget to add them in okay so we're going to layer that on there like that so remember think of it as a square not a triangle and then it's much easier to comprehend alright and then that will fit in there like so and finish that off beautifully and then you just do the same with that one. <laughs> Sorry about that. Necessarily need special card for stamping, but go for some nice smooth, okay? Watercolour card and paper, things like that, are not brilliant for stamping on because they absorb so much of the ink it can end up patchy. This is just basic, cheap, basic white card, okay? It's probably about 210 GSM. Right, so I've got my stamp on my block. I'm not really bothered about the direction because I'm, I would be fussy cutting this one. And I'm using archival ink. And I'm using archival ink because I'm going to colour with alcohol inks and the archival is just, it's just good. It gives me a nice image. If I want to put anything on, I know it's not going to run. Okay, Versa um, markers, is it Versa mark? Versa fine, I beg your pardon. That one's very good as well, but I find it quite wet and I'm a bit clumsy and I will smudge it. The other thing about the archival is it does dry pretty quick. So 
I don't smudge. Okay. There we go. Beautiful stamps. They stamp absolutely no problem at all. And then here's the second one that I'm going to use. If you find that you're not getting good images, put something soft underneath. Um, sometimes some stamps need a little bit of help with a little bit of cushion underneath your paper or your card, I beg your pardon. All right. This one says, just a note, and this one says, sorry, it says, just a note to say, and this one says, you are incredible. Okay. So then I'll make sure that's fully dry and then I'll colour it with my alcohol inks, okay? And then the smaller one there is going on the bottom and the larger one there is going in the middle. Let me just show you those beautiful images. So I've just coloured them in, very basic colours with my alcohol markers. So here you can see the finished the finish because I'm not going to do colouring and fussy cutting on camera so I do fussy cut all the way around now if you're not brilliant at fussy cutting my advice there is go slow take your teaser and turn the paper um, not the scissors so just keep cutting and turn the paper my second tip is if it's not perfect get some light coloured ink and ink the edges because that will hide a multitude of sins Okay, now my tip for the bottom layer here, this one is raised up on dimensional dots, on like circular foam dots, okay. This one is raised up on two layers. So on this one you've got one layer and on this one you've got two layers. So you put one circular dot down first, take the tab off and then put another one on the top. So this one is going to protrude higher so that it holds this bit open okay and then just for another finishing touch there I've added some rhinestone crystals to the peacock's tail so I hope you'll give that a try it is a lovely lovely um, effective looking fold it looks a lot more complicated than it is it's beautiful a lovely lovely gift to give to anybody I hope that helps I hope it inspires you in your card making have a lovely weekend and I'll see you again very soon bye for now